Okay, so this is a weird angle. It's like, it's kind of, well, in, and then plus you can kind of see how it's like we're tipped or something too. But um, my butt is killing me and I keep sitting on the other side. I've been talking like four or five hours a day sitting on that one um, hip. And I don't know what it is. I mean, I got a bony butt, but Jesus Christ, it is like it's something. I, I, I feel like it's some sort of empathetic kind of thing to her pain or something. I don't know. It's weird. I wish my body would catch up with this whole ghost thing though, because I feel like a ghost, but I wish my body would uh, feel like it too, because all the aches that like uh, the, the ache things and stuff, which then of course there's people saying all of that is, um, ascension symptoms. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, there's some of the things, the things that I always have, because there was two that I heard yesterday on their ascension symptom thing, where I was like, well, I've got that and that. I don't know if it's the chemicals or a puck. I don't know if it's ascension symptoms. I mean, I don't know. I only know the stuff that I know and I don't know everything. That's for sure. <laughs> so, um, but there was, um, <sighs> it's nice, weird. It's two, four, four. That's a lot of twos when you break it down. Two, 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 two. Oh my God. And today's two. Today's the 22nd. And ever motherfucking since it became the 22nd, I swear to God, ever since midnight, we've been up. And now it's two, 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 two on the two, two. <laughs> and this is what we've been having too. Oh my God. It's intense, dude. It's intense. <laughs> And she had another accident. I don't know what's going on with this. And I know that other people... Okay, that's... It's okay, honey. Uh, uh, I know other people are having weird things with their animals, too, though. Because I've seen some videos and stuff. So, the animals are feeling whatever we're feeling. They're feeling it, too. You know? And I, I mean, and that just, to me, is kind of confirmation of how weird it is. Because they're so weirded out. They are... And she's having all sorts of issues. One of the things since we've been up, uh, you know, I found this other giant accident. She was, when I got up, I had been laying in my room and I couldn't get comfortable. I couldn't sleep. I just felt wide awake. And then there's always, there's just this party going on. And if, if I can, you know, go out of it and go to sleep, like it takes focus, but then there, I don't know. Once I'm a certain amount awake, it's just like, it, it's just an energy or something. Because I feel tired. Like, I really want to go to sleep. <laughs> but I can't get to sleep. And it's just, it's like uh, too much thinking, too much talking, too much going on. And it's like, I, I, I had to come to the resolution that these are just the dark hours of the daytime. <laughs> of this of this day it is just the dark hours and I can sleep at any time of the day so whatever at some point today I will go sleep at some point I will go live too uh it's fun to go on it is like to me a lot of hours of uh because there are a lot of hours on those but it, some of it is just I, you know I don't know I haven't watched them back to see if they are like just kind of a waste if it's just me sitting there talking and then I still I can't tell either when people are making comments if they're talking to me or talking to each other like it's hard to tell it, you're, when you're I don't know it's different when you're in the communication center and you're sitting there typing but even when I would be in those lives and see that I couldn't yeah, I, I couldn't tell who sometimes who people were talking to and stuff people would talk to me directly in there and I wouldn't, and then I didn't know how to talk back. It took a long time for me to even figure out that whole comment thing. But I still can't figure out how to make it stay on the live. But I don't know, maybe it's not supposed to. Or maybe it's when you watch the video, you can read the comments. I don't know. I'll have to go back in and watch them. They're so fucking long. And I, I don't know. Everything is just too weird. I've got to go back because, uh, so when we got up, I, I got up. And, um, I couldn't tell where she was. And sometimes I, I swear to God, there's something or, or some, you know, there's some kind of energy around here that 
does some sort of sounds. Like it's trying to confuse me. It's trying to make me think Stella's crying. Because it just happens too much. It's not like me. There's something doing it. And so, um, I, um, you know, I got, I got up and came out, but she was asleep in the hallway and there's a little rug in the hallway, you know, one of those runner kind of rugs. And so she was asleep on that. And when I walked out, I was putting my clothes back on because in my bed, like who sleeps with clothes on? I mean, just gotta get on that. Go back to fetal. So, um, so then I, I, I came out and so I was lifting my arm to put on my tank top and I hit the picture on the walls painting my mom had done is kind of heavy so it made a bang and she was so snoozing she was so out and I don't know if I'm just making excuses I've just got to I mean I, I mean she's getting older and she may be having dementia maybe this is giving her the dementia maybe it's the chemicals have given her the dementia I don't know something's going on for sure it, it just this whole thing where she keeps going outside and just sitting there crying and then it seeming like she doesn't know what to do she doesn't know where to go she doesn't know what's up and I went through all that dementia with uh, Winston but he was always kind of slow he was always kind of a do -do -do. Uh, so it was like a natural progression this is more drastic and it's more like sometimes she's sharp as a tack and then sometimes she's just sitting there staring and seems to be lost so I, I don't know but uh, so when I hit my hand, uh, you know, and she's laying there snoring and it just it jolted her awake and she jumped up like kind of scared. And so then, you know, I said sorry and stuff and came out and then I was going to lay on the couch and then um, it was just one thing after another. Oh, and I started a sourdough lo loaf rising less. I didn't even ever like sourdough before. I just thought, well, I'm going to try this. And, um, oh my God, it is so freaking fragrant and it smells so good. I've already cooked it now. It's already, it's done in the oven, but it smelled so good as it was rising and I kept being up. So I kept going in and kept doing it, but I kept thinking, well, it'd be really good if I left it rising all night. It would, I bet make it extra sour and then I'll do all that stuff in the morning, but I've been up all night doing it. So now I've already cooked it and I can't wait to eat it. And then plus a toast with goat cheese and apricot jam. Oh my God. And, but today, while it's really warmer this morning, just that with just this butter. Oh God, it's so good. I can't wait to taste it. And it kept rising again, really puffy. I think this is going to be like award winning loaf. I'm excited about it. But, um, then when she got up and she came out here and then I was laying on the couch and I had to get up and I don't know, she's doing something. She keeps jumping up all of a sudden and going in all directions and starts barking. And so I um, went to go do something and I went down the hall and I was like, oh my God, it's wet. And I picked it up, it's a giant puddle because she's big. And so I had this giant puddle, put that in the washer. I was like, what in the hell? I had to clean the floor up. And I'm just like, what? Did I scare the piss out of her? So the other day was she just knocked out, sleeping really hard, and then that came out. And then today I scared. Or what is going on? It's not like she's crouched. It's not like she's going to have an accident. It's not like she, you know, I mean, she was laying there. So in the other time too, because she was laying there on her bed, snoring. And then I got up and I went in the bathroom and all of a sudden she came in there all like panicky. And I was like, what is up? And then, um... When I came out and I saw, so I don't know if it, it man, I don't know. There's something I gotta just keep watching. Something that's different, but she's eating again. And she wants to eat nonstop. Uh, she already wanted to eat this morning. And then one of the times she jumped up and she ran to the door. And then um, I thought I was going to fall back asleep, but it was hell no. So I'm going to back up, take her. Um, and then it smelled so bad. I was like, oh my gosh, so she must have been farting and needed to get hurry and get out so she may still have the diarrhea still got the poo go going so um it was smelled so bad i went and walked around to see like oh my god did she go to the bathroom in here and uh, so then um and, but since she's been in it still has been jump up start barking go go to the door start crying get up start pacing it's like this is fucking intense man like i feel intense 
But then when she starts acting intense, because it's, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I really think this, uh, this 1022, 1023 thing, I think it's going to have an impact on something. There's going to be some kind of change. It just feels fucking like something's going to change. I don't think it's not going to be the solar flash or the rapture, Jesus coming or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I think it, it's really likely that it will have some kind of impact on the financial for sure because of how it's all lined up in that that a report thing I was hearing yesterday, the Republic, I'm positive it is a military, like their news letter thing. Um, that there's, there, uh, there's like, it's like they're there for us to get to know this stuff, but not everybody knows it's there. Not everybody pays attention, but it like, does reports like on the tribunals and stuff like that. There's people who go and watch that stuff. But uh, I've heard it read a couple of times on this money thing. And back where they said that the QFS was going to start. So where they said like the Fed now is going to start. And I said they can't start it because it's going to automatically go to the other one. And then they just quit talking about the Fed now. Just, you know, let's just let's, let's, let's pretend like we never said anything. But I think if they gave the date of July 1st that they were going to turn it on, when they turned it on, it went on to the QFS. But they're using things to try and block it or something. They're doing something because, um, or it's a part of the whole way it's going, you know, however it is, it is the way it's going to go down because it's the way it's going down. But um, so the... I so said on that July 1st or something, it was already put into motion that this report was saying it already started and this is where it's going to, we're going to start seeing it now, but it's already started. They've already got the system up and running, but now it's going to start. And this report was saying that it will be more on the down low. It isn't going to be like they will be pulling people in you would get an email or something and they'll tell you that you need to come in for your appointment and then it will be a whole thing where it's like your private appointment or something and then this report was saying they were trying to get it up through all the people by 1010 maybe that is all this hiring of all these irs people or something maybe they're really not going to be tax people maybe they're really people to help us uh figure out the money thing you know to get it all uh, organized or something on this big shift I don't know but um so it, it supposedly it's already running so then this whole thing of whatever this data is it's going to go when the banks collapse is when it's going to you know show to us so I I I, I still I feel really hopeful I'm not going to get disappointed I'm not going to be like all depressed or something if it doesn't go this weekend but i feel super hopeful that it is that's for sure and this weird energy it just feels intense and the way that the planets have lined up in the past for all the financial crashes and stuff because the planet alignments and stuff has a real thing to do with you know the spiritual aspect of our existence and so i think that that's important the way that they're lining up and um there's just so many things it's like all these different things coming together but the other thing too is it well it's going to lead to a lot of anger and shit which is one of the things i want to talk about too is i had just read a, a a comment when i was laying there one of the times when i was in between trying to go to sleep and i was <coughs> gosh <coughs> I love some little wheeze. Um, and so I was um, reading the comments and uh, somebody was talking something about uh, anger and stuff. And you know what I just got to say? This is so fucking cool. Like uh, you guys have no idea how exciting and how cool it is to go on and... Um, you know, well, to speak your truth and be accepted by people, you know, to just be like, you know, nobody has to agree with me or think on anything, but to just, you know, be accepting, which most of the people who come in are so accepting 
and I think it uh, even opens them up to sides of themselves that they kept more hidden or something. But um, but on top of that, to uh, for, for so many people to be so into their healing, oh my God, that is so exciting. And it gives, it just to me, it just, it's like the, the headliner gives you hope to the new age, you know, just to see how much people are interested in it and want to feel better and want to take responsibility for how they feel and want to make changes. And, you know, that is our change. But it's exciting to be a part of that, you know. It's exciting, even though it was hard to go through and learn this stuff, like, through the experience, but to be able to share the, what I've learned and what I understand so that other people can also benefit from it. And then for there to be receptors to what that I'm putting out is like this totally uh, congruent kind of experience. It just, it feels like super good. It feels like, it just makes me feel so happy. Um, that anything I can share can help somebody. That just is such a good feeling. And I think that the more that we all get like feeling good, when you do stuff to help people is such a good feeling and good feelings are so much better than bad feelings, bad feelings. We want to, you know, move out of the bad feeling era and into the good feeling era and good feelings come from doing good things. And it's, um, it's weird because so, so many people think that doing good things is going to be taking something away from them, but you just don't know what all you're getting back. And uh, the, the good energy, the good feelings and stuff, the positive, it's, um, it, it is, it almost, it almost does seem kind of like, uh, yeah, that's a whole bunch of different things. But anyways, it's an experience. It's definitely an experience. Um, but so the anger, I wanted to talk more about the anger thing because when I read it and then I laid down, I was just getting, oh my gosh, it was like a flood of information. It must be like where people say download. And I was just seeing so many things about anger. And um, because it's a big one, it's a really big one. And people have really uh, adapted to using anger as their way to, you know, uh, maneuver through life and what life throws at you and stuff. So anyways, I wanted to talk more about that. Uh, and um, when I just was like, it gave up on trying to go back to sleep, put my bread in, start some tea and um, start thinking, well, I'll just get up and record and stuff. And then um, I, I went on TikTok to see like, is there anything going on? Like I'll check on my notifications anyways, but I always like to see, you know, if something's happening or going on or whatever. And <coughs> gosh, it's wheeze. It's so tight. <coughs> um, oh my gosh, I've been sneezing my head off and those fucking things have been crawling around my goddamn base. And um I am so stuck. And I do the black seed oil. I am just uh I I think it's um like where I'm at and stuff. And last night it was so fucking weird. I gotta say that one too, but uh, when I went on the TikTok uh, this morning, I think it's the only video I've even been seeing. Did I even see another video? This is the first one. And it was just like, oh my God, damn. And today is my uh, son-in-law's memorial. And it uh, makes a difference over this video, I'm going to say. It is, oh. God, I swear to God, I swear to motherfucking God. I don't know how. Like, we have to have so motherfucking much empathy for the people who are about to wake up to this shit because it's so fucking much. It's just like when you think that they can't. It's just like, oh, oh so fucked. So motherfucking fucked. So this fuckery is, I only saw part one. So, and I don't know how much this has gone around. I don't know how many people have already seen it. 
or what the deal is. This is just the first thing I saw. It's just all about the shit I fucking talk about. And then, um, it's just, uh, as a doctor who I, I'm, I think he's in Ohio. Yeah, I don't fucking have to talk in code because this is going to be the same thing. They're, they're going to block the fucking shit out of this. If, I mean, I don't know. I mean, when, when the banks go censorship, I think uh, there's going to be some big things that will start going. And there will be more open conversation. But this is definitely something that they don't want out there. This is like you know, kind of Project Veritas. I don't even know who these girls were. If they were podcasters or what they were. As all you see is him. You know, they're doing the interview and asking the questions. And it looks like, you know, a coffee shop or something like where they go and meet these people in these locations and then talk to them. And um, so he's a whistleblower. So, and the only thing I can really remember about his background is he's been a doc since, like, I mean, he was involved with creating ventilators back in the 60s. So, he has been around a while. And he is, um, he said he had, this is so, he said it's so bad and people don't want to know this and people, but people have got to know. He said this is so, so bad. <laughs> so, it's like hard because this guy talking code. Okay, because we know what my son-in-law died from, right? And we know what they said in the hospital with the brain dead stuff, right? So, um, he uh, went in on an overdose. And then and he was having seizures for five hours. And the people who he was with didn't know what to do. So, they just didn't do anything. So, he was having seizures for five hours. Then he got taken to the hospital. And then he was um, in his John Doe. So his family couldn't find him. In the hospital, that won't say anything. He didn't call the police. You call all these different things. And they are just like, they don't give a fuck. You're, you're asking them about another overdose. They don't give a fuck. You took your garbage person, family member, and, you know, fuck off. They treat them like, they treat the family like they're, uh, you know, like they're at fault somehow that they're garbage people or something, trying to make them feel bad at this crisis time, which is another fucking thing. And then, um, but uh, so she finally got to him and stuff, and then they said, um, he's brain dead. And, uh, I don't think they wanted a retrieval. I don't know, though. If they did, because he has um, diabetes, and I don't know what I I don't know what his uh, his stuff would have been like, I, you know. But fuck, I mean, Jesus Christ, these people take anything. Fuck these people, God damn. So um, yeah, it's a, all this is a whole big scam. Uh, bringing the the whole thing with the overdoses and stuff. <sighs> it's a scam. Oh my god, this is so sickening. It's so sickening and too. Uh, and I want to just play, I uh, just say it all, but it's like <sighs> you gotta be so careful how you say it. Um. So there's a test that they do. Okay, so they, I, I probably even the blue stuff, it's all a certain thing that they want them to overdose on. Like I've talked about and talked about, there's something fucking goddamn weird about them needing so much goddamn organs. Like what in the holy hell? What in the holy hell? <sighs> this guy said any anybody who you have who goes into a hospital from the age of 16 to 30, who had it loses consciousness? He said you're fucked. You know that is the dangerous, dangerous thing that can happen. This that is what they're looking for. It's like this is like a fucking soylent green factory. These motherfuckers. Oh god, just got such a wave of anger. 
where they fucking lure people into the place like they've got their health in mind. These motherfuckers, god damn. So the uh, blue stuff apparently is, seems to be something uh, so they can keep those going. And then when they come in, the thing that they give them is to keep those things is it's like that so that they can it's like they set up a a, a scenario a, de, a death scenario thing they, just like they were with the dovic back in the thing with the protocol the protocol you gotta do the protocol it comes from administration gotta do it it's not what they said to do even though it just seems to just wipe everybody out because you're doing all the things you shouldn't do for these things so uh, should you follow the protocol or should you follow your fucking brain? And so, okay, fuck, there's going to be some goddamn hospital people. Like, oh, fuck. I am um, goddamn, I'm glad I got out of goddamn hospitals. Like, fuck, I was going to some fucking people are going to go down all over the place. It's such a goddamn criminal institution. Fucking hell. And, um... So the, they also do a thing called an apnea test. So what they did is in the 60s, there was um, something in some other country or something, they did some transplant. And um, so then over here in America, I guess, you know, competition, and, I, and this is something, too, when I was in nursing school. Like, we had the whole thing about uh, medical ethics. And, you know, that's kind of stuff. Like, they start talking about something. I don't just get the information. I get all the information. So, it's very expansive what I start seeing when um, when something, like I, like I said. And, and, and it should be like that for everybody. So, if you don't have that, I don't know. But like you get information and just, like, it it like opens files in your mind or something. And so uh, there would be things and it just, it, it just, it connects dots or something. It's like throughout life you get different things and it just, and then I'm always, I can always just see more than what this stuff is. It's so uh, the ethical thing, you know, made me question a lot of things. Like and I, I like I don't know. I mean, I I can't believe there's people still working in this field at this point. Um, so uh, whatever went on, it they, yeah, I can't remember. It was some Harvard doctors though, so it must have been like I don't know Harvard Hospital. It was at Mayo Clinic or something like that. I don't fucking know, but it was a three day old baby and an eighteen day old baby. And they took the baby, uh, the heart out of the three-day-old baby, and they put it in the 18-year-old baby, and both babies died. And it was completely unethical. It was immoral. It was like this whole huge thing. It was a giant thing. And they should have never done it. And, and I remember back, you know, when there was all this, like, uh, they think they're gods and, you know, talking about cloning. They, they used to talk about this stuff differently. Now they've pushed it on people in a different way. This curl thing is going to drive me crazy. It's so strange. Um, and so then, uh, the, uh, so they, it, there was such a backlash of what they had done that they had to, you know, come up with something. So they started, and this may be where the Harvard professors came in, not on the hot, not on the surgery part. But whatever, all these fucking institutions, these science, you know, we're going to do it first and shit. That's what these fucking, you know, these Yahtzees are all about, man. So, the, um, I love Miss Tootie Booty. I'm about to have another bathroom break. Here we go. Oh, and I've got myself twisted in here now. Do you need to go back outside? Do you need to go potty? Oh, hold on. I can't, 
I don't, I don't I feel like I need to move this because now this is across here. And, um, it is even short. She must still have the diarrhea. So, uh, anyways, um, so the, um, I wish I could just go back a second and see what book I was talking about. And when I get up, I think, okay, you'll remember, you'll remember. Um, and then I start worrying about, like, if I just relax, I, I can see it again. But it, I, there's a whole other part of it. Like, there's this whole other aspect of yourself that it'll interfere sometimes. It'll start asking questions and stuff. So, um, uh, let me remember back to the thing. Because I keep having poo goo stuck in my head now. Um, okay, so... The person, um, okay, so the doctors at the hospital and the, uh, okay, so when the, when the people come in and, um, okay, okay. So the, uh, the baby, there was such this big, huge backlash on what had happened that uh, people freaked out. So they went in with these um, science people and they came up with a new thing called brain death. So they invented brain death to cover their asses. And We just went through this. <laughs> so it's like, I, I, <sighs> this, <sighs> this, <sighs> oh, fuck. This, this, you know how I say, like, there's no death. Um, well, they're forcing people out of their bodies, basically, in order to take their organs. So, he was saying that there is, um, it's all states of consciousness. He was saying just like there's a tree, there's a flower, there's a bird, there's a rock, everything's alive. So, just because um, somebody's not uh, you know, having brain activity or whatever, they're still alive. It, it is, yeah, you'd have to go in and listen to his, this, this, this interview to see, uh, to hear, and, you know, come up with your own stuff to I mean, hear more of it too and see, you know, you decide what you think. But, um, so the, the consciousness is in there and alive. And then I know like with people who are in comas, like I, this one girl who was just talking about, she came out of a coma after like four years or something. And she was very disappointed when she came out because in her coma, she was having a great life. She had a very different life than what, the one that she had here. And so when she woke up, it was like coming out of a good life and going into this other life that like brought her down or something. So you it's like because all consciousness is hold on. I'm coming. Because all states of consciousness um exist. So just because your body isn't functioning doesn't mean your consciousness isn't. But also keep in mind that when your body is going through a trauma, that doesn't mean your consciousness is going through a trauma. Although you feel pain and although like, you know, I'm going through this experience through this pain and, uh, but it isn't the same as like when you're, when you're leaving this, the, when you're leaving, like, like I tried to get my daughter and his mom to understand the five hours where he, his body was going through that. He wasn't in it. 
Like, uh, you know, when my dad was dying, he wasn't, and I've been around a lot of people who are dying, and they leave their bodies. They go back and forth. They're not just sitting there going through the whole thing. Just like what this doctor is basically saying, just because their body's not functioning, they're still, they've, their soul is still attached to their body. And um, it isn't, you know, if their body needs to heal, whatever it needs to heal, it needs its own process to go through its own healing. But what they're doing is they're setting it up so that they can, it's all about the motherfucking organs. I don't understand how in the holy hell there is not... I mean, I'm so turned off against, like, like my I, my kidneys go bad or something. It's like, bye, everybody. <laughs> Parts are breaking. Gotta go. I know the med beds are coming, and we're not going to have that anymore. But Jesus Christ. I don't think it, there could be that many people whose stuff is going bad. It, it, like, it doesn't make any sense. And, and you got to think about, too, in the hot, like, who's making the money off of it? There's something going on. Because this isn't like they're bringing them off of the street and bringing them and getting 25K. This is they're in the motherfucking place that's supposed to save them. So, this is shady shit. It just gets shadier and motherfucking shadier. But he says, so when they come in uh, and they give them the, the, the Narcan and then that is to save their organs, but to uh, let them die or something. It's like this, like they're doing something uh, to save the organs, but not save them or something. And so then they'll put them on a ventilator. So they say they got to put them on a ventilator. And that is a part of this whole thing. It's a part of the game plan like this is the shit you go you don't want him to do like if you're a fucking person i swear to god your person gets in goddamn i, I mean a motorcycle wreck sometimes they gotta fucking stall their top of their head open i guess there's a some a, a well-known i i don't know if she's a christian influencer or something her son just got in a big accident and she was going all public asking people to call and stuff is he got in a head-on collision, a motorcycle, and he's in there, and he, they were saying, telling her he's brain dead. And this is just what this doctor saying. Brain dead does not exist. Doesn't fucking exist. She's in the hospital begging people to do something. She's trying to get him uh, moved to a trauma one hospital. She's asking everybody to call and stuff like that. And then the two hospitals talk. And this guy, I don't know, I'm... Do not give your goddamn organ. Do not give your fucking organs. And, and and he said they always have a certain kind of person that comes in to approach you. And so we got to turn this into something good. So the um, this lady, she's begging for you know her, him to get moved. And they're saying, no, I'm not going to do it. There's nothing they can do. He's brain dead. You know, deal with it. He's dead, you know. Uh, and she's saying no. And so then the two hospitals talk and they decide, no, we're not moving him. No, nope, he's dead. There's nothing we're going to do. Then you go hear this guy and he's saying there's no such thing as it, that they are doing that on purpose because it's all about this retrieval situation. It's all about this, about for everything. It's all about this. It's all about this. <sighs> Her whole fucking world. And uh, so the um, so then he said that then they'll tell you that they need to do an apnea test. That's how they'll check brain activity. And he said that is the worst thing. Do not ever ever let them do. It. You have anybody who has any kind of brain injury, don't let them do an apnea test. And it's so crazy too is that I got my brain injury in the hospital. Uh, the hospital gave me my brain injury. So, uh, and they sure the fuck didn't catch it. They sure the fuck didn't do it. Like, uh, I mean, I guess it was. I don't know what the hell. Do you need to go back outside? Did you just go pee? It's okay, honey. If you did, it's fine. I don't know what the hell is going on. This is so strange. I'm telling you this. 
three, two, two. What the fuck? Did you go potty on the thing? Honey, do you need to go back outside? Hey, it's just weird. Everything is weird right now. How about I just open the door? You want to go out? You can go out. Do you want your treat? You got your treat right here. It's okay. You're okay. I don't know. It feels like a little damp or something, but it, I don't know. This is so weird. What the fuck? This is so weird. Okay. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really feeling this two, two, two. And this two, two, or this two, two, and this two, two. This is two, two to two, two. Fuck, I can't even talk. Because I've been seeing two, two, two to two, two, three all, all the time. And so now, and I kept thinking this two, two, to two, two, three was going to be significant. Now it just keeps, everything keeps telling me it's going to be in this weird energy. I just feel like, fuck, this is intense, man. Like, what is it? Like, how how is this going to feel? Like, when things turn the other way, like, if we're feeling so much energy coming, because this would be the thing that's going to turn things. It, you know, like, like, where they say about the pole shift and all these different things, like it to me, it's like a, it's like a whole movement. It's like a whole big thing, but it's all like dominoes. And this is like the, the it would be if the if the money crashes, that would be the first domino to turn things the other way. Even though there's been all these other ones leading up, this will be the most impactful that will hit people the hardest, and that's where we're going to see so much change start, start to happen. So, uh, as far it's a whole energetic thing. And then there's going to be other things, you know, to go through for the whole thing. I mean, we've got a lot to happen for this changing of the ages situation. But um, anyways, I get back to what I was saying. So he said that uh, this apnea testing is the worst thing. Do not let them do that. He said, do not let them do anything like that. It, it to me, is now... Uh, fuck, dude. Because I don't want to say, you know, well, they could have taken my son-in-law home and, uh, you know, maybe save him because he had so many other stuff. He had, he's had diabetes since he was a kid. You know, I always, ever since I had known that he had diabetes as a kid, I always thought, like, you know, he's going to have a shorter lifespan. I always thought, like, my daughter starting that as a life partner and thinking you're going to spend your retirement years with this person is not likely a lot of diabetic like juvenile diabetes is just hard on people and it you know and i know we're going to find out that they were doing it all wrong i mean all of these things have been always to just uh kill people but i mean they're purposely doing this the blue stuff has something to do with it so they can get more people of a certain age and just think of all the videos we've seen of these young people who have been going and they get them in there you rush them into the hospital they do this whole big thing with the narcan oh my god and we're going to put them on the ventilator and you know we'll check and see and then uh come back on my son's case or my son-in-law's case they said both sides of his brain were affected it was just a big old melt there was nothing in there. It was all just melted away. And, um, but they, uh, they do that because it, like they could have, um, in, I don't know about the apnea test too. I sent it to my daughter and I said, don't wash this if it's going to really trigger you. But I mean, this could be like a fucking lawsuit. There's going to be so many goddamn lawsuits, so many class action lawsuits and shit, so many big ones because of stuff like this. So I don't know if they did the apnea test, but the doctors definitely told her, you know, there was no hope and stuff like that and took them off the things and put him on comfort care. And then they just, that comfort care just is like your body just starves because uh, you're not giving it anything. But when you think there's no brain activity, you don't want to prolong their body. So it seemed like the most humane thing to do always in the hospital. But, you know, now to know what they're doing, and it's all on purpose, and the apnea test it, um, causes the brain to swell. 
it causes it to have this really bad reaction. And so where you think like the person is not doing well or something, then they do that and it makes it way worse. And he said they even have, there's a person right now who is alive that they have not counted as death, but they're still alive. They've got so much shady shit going on with the, all of this stuff. And the, the same way what I uh, was talking about, like, hopefully you can understand what I'm saying, what I'm saying about all this corruption, and all linked with the money, with the uh, builders, with the developers, with the realtors, with all that stuff and how how it influences the, uh, the inflation and the finances and the housing market and the development and the crashing and the taking things from all of it is uh, all goes in um, together in this uh, medical. It has a whole fucking institution of corruption all based on, you know, I mean, it's drug running and uh, retrieval of the O-R-G-A-N uh, is like, they, they keep on saying like the traffic is such like big, but I, I think the organs got to be making, like this is, it's mental. So I mean, if I see some more of that video, I'm going to watch, but it's just, it's so disturbing. So disturbing, and then, uh, you know, and I don't know what's going to happen with that one woman's thing, but for it to be, like, right now in the news thing, and then I see that video right away, and he is, you know, they made up brain dead. It's not even real. The consciousness is still attached. It's not really gone. It's not really, they aren't dead. They're still alive, even without brain activity. They're, they're still alive. Their body's still functioning. So, uh, so it's kind of like giving everybody their own, you know, it's like just letting them be comatose, letting them, um, but you still would have to, uh, feed them and care for them, but still while they heal, but, uh, man, I had, a, you know, a kid and they got any kind of hurt or unconscious, man, it's not safe to even take them. He, he was, um, and he kept saying, this is stuff people are not going to want to hear. This is, he can't, he, he can't even believe how bad it was, but oh my God, just on those. And, uh, and just the whole thing with my son-in-law and the whole way it went down and how it just happened. And then, but today's is a memorial, and then that truth. It's like, oh my God. He could have. Ah, fuck. He could have. He got a. Oh my God. This is. Oh, it's just rough, man. Yeah, it, it's just. There's going to be so much anger. It's going to come out of all this stuff. So much anger. And that, you know, that is. Um, the comment thing that I had wanted to talk about with the anger was that they were uh, talking about their own anger and they're realizing, you know, catching themselves, noticing and seeing themselves. And that is such a positive thing when you can start noticing the things that you do that are um, kind of uh, harm your relationships. And so when you can catch yourself, when you can see yourself, and then when you can start you know, noticing the triggers that are leading up to it, noticing your body, you know, so you start uh, noticing ahead of time before you get mad. Because, you know, a lot of people who have uh, issues with anger, you know, go from zero to a hundred, like boom, like they're just anger just so fast. And it is because they their wick is so small. They don't have anything in there to, uh, there's nothing in there. They've used it up and they're just running on fumes all the time. And that is one of the things like uh, an angry person doesn't really realize how much they're just always running on fumes. And there's a reason why they lose their mind and get angry and so quick, why they're so uh, hairpin trigger. And, and why it affects the relationship, you know, what affects your relationships is so you can learn and grow and heal. 
and improve what you want to improve, make changes for yourself and make differences where you want to make a difference. Um, but the, um, the reason why that there is no wick is it's past traumas. It's all the things you're carrying. It's all the load that you're trying to support. And then every little thing that happens is just another thing, just another motherfucking thing. And it's like your load's already too heavy. You've already, in a, you know, when there can be kids with anger issues, you know, I mean, it doesn't just have to be like you're an old person and you've been just carrying so many problems for so many years that it's just gotten to you now and now you're angry. It can be at all different things. It can have a lot to do with just what you've gone through and how it's burdened you or what you've held on to. The things that it's all the things you hold on to, it's taking up too much space. And so you don't have uh, much room to have, um, you know, it's like quickly you hit anger, you know, whereas some other people that they um, aren't filled to the top or some people, it's all different because people can be filled to the top and go into just self dep dep deprivate dep I don't know. Deprivate, dep I don't know, just beating themselves down, just just uh, self sabotaging. Uh, so you can have different reactions, uh, you know. So somebody, it, it can be somebody who's super super angry, and somebody who's super super self sabotaging. They can have the same issues still. They just present them in a different ways. So that's why we got to get out of this idea of judging. We all have our own little. Uh, problems. Uh, the more we work on our own problems and quit trying to fix everybody else's problems, the more that it's productive. It is like it is arrogant. It is uh, hypocritical to try and tell somebody else how to fix their problems when we have our own. So to sit there and tell somebody else what they need to do, it's like, well, what about you? Like, how many relationships have we been in and that have those conversations? Like, we've all had them. And then been frustrated, like, what is going on? Why can't these relationships ever be fixed? But we were always trying to fix the other person. We weren't fixing ourselves. So it was like a completely defeatist kind of attempt to begin with. And so, you know, it's, a, it's a changing of the guards. It's like a changing of the way you look at things. And so when you have a lot of anger and stuff, first thing you can do is... Uh, you know, for, for, it's really good as soon as you can uh, um, realize it, acknowledge it, have awareness of it, and um, so that you can start making attempts to make changes. And so first, it's like backpedaling or reeling it back in or something, go backwards. And so when you start going backwards from your anger, so you take the, the center point, the nucleus of the anger, wherever the the outbreak is where you lose your mind or something and you go backwards, there was things leading up. There were signs that were leading up to you were going to get mad. This person was pushing you, you know, and, 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 and it all depends like on someone's awareness. Like there can be some people are completely aware of like, oh yeah, I was getting, I was getting so tense. I was stomping around, I was shutting doors harder. I was, you know, they're going to have total awareness and other people's like, they don't feel it at all. They don't see it coming. They just all of a sudden feel the blow up. So it can be, that's all in the gray. That's all in the shades of gray. So wherever you are is where you got to start working from. Uh, but you can wheel yourself back to get to the point where you start recognizing, you know, what is your, um, what things are are irritating you and what things are starting to make you feel that fuse is lit. It's lit so you can catch it before, even though it's a short one, you can still catch it ahead and start recognizing so you don't have to go into the whole blow up. It goes in the blow up, you usually do things or say things that you regret, that you are angry at yourself, you feel shame about, you feel guilt. So it's really very self-sabotaging. So see, it's another self-sabotaging thing. And so, you, you know, mo most of us don't want to sabotage us. Most of us want to have good relationships. 
We want to feel love and we want to feel connection. We don't want to feel, we don't want everybody around us to be on guard. And I think every single family has somebody who everybody thinks, oh, well, they've got a temper problem. They've got anger issues. You know, well, you got to watch what you say around them. They'll lose their minds. You know, everybody's got one in their family because it's all things that we learn from. And, and it's all a spectrum, you know, because if that person's not around, then there's somebody else who has uh, anger too. So it is all a, a spectrum of how we register, you know, compare who's angrier and stuff like that. And it's all based on our own lens, our own comparison, you know, of what we think of anger, what we've dealt with, our own experience. So it has nothing to do. It's like you can't tell somebody else to use your ruler. We all have our own rulers. So um, the, but w the more you can catch yourself leading into it then the more you can teach yourself better ways like when you notice like somebody is getting you upset to to recognize that and to just have the ability to walk away go for a walk however you want to handle it in whatever situation is up to you like if you're at home with your wife and she's saying something you just got home from work and she's bitching and moaning and you, are, you know, you had your own day. You don't want to fucking listen to it. She won't shut up. She never think, pays any attention. She doesn't ever think about you. All she thinks about is her own problems. And you're just getting more and more mad. And, uh, you know, something falls. And when the kids start crying. And then you just blow up. You, you go back and catch yourself to as soon as she started talking. As soon as she started saying whatever it was. As soon as you felt that ping, that's the ping that you need to go and self-adjust to. That's what you need to go reflect on. Like, why did that just make me mad? Oh, man, because my mom did that every night when my dad got home from work. And then my dad got so mad and would start a fight every night. It makes me so fucking pissed. You know, it can be something like that. And you just go back and you start seeing. You go back and you remember. And, and it just is like you release it, going back and remembering. And you can have more attached to it. Like if you keep holding on to something, you got to go deeper into it. you got to release more things about it. But you go in and you start recognizing and you start understanding. And then plus, you take that time to you to go out and do what you need to do. You know, you, you know, you probably needed some time to yourself before you even went in and started dealing with this shit. You probably needed a little break but then also you need to set that boundary you need to say you know if your wife you you just walk in the door and you just dealt with traffic you just you know you've put yourself out there all day long and been friendly to people you didn't want to be friendly to and now you're home and you just want to just melt into the couch and not think not talk not do anything and you know your wife's been there all day long she's lonely she's upset the kids have drove her crazy she needs to vent you know it's just like this two different energies happening and and then the two partners like get angry at each other resentful because the other person's not there for them but it's a miscommunication it's like a, a vibrational mismatch and so you know for one thing you can realize that and then to be like, not get resentful, to just be like, okay, she's having her time, she's having her day, she's got a bad day going too, can't get mad at her, but you got to set a boundary for yourself, you know, whatever it is. If it is, you know, your whole issue is this, as soon as I walk in the door, you start handing me more problems, and I haven't even dealt with the problems I had all day. I haven't even released those ones, and you're handing me new ones. Like, you know, whatever your boundary is, you know, like I need an hour to come in and sit in silence and regroup before I can start entering this new plane of existence with its new problems. You know, be aware of your transitions, be aware of what it is that you need and then to set those boundaries and, uh, you know, put yourself out there and be vulnerable and say what it is you need and, and do it. Right? Like you're going to get such a better response when you're doing this stuff out of kindness when you are speaking ahead before you're getting mad and before you're making people walk around on eggshells and everybody's scared of t ticking you off, 
you know, and you're a ticking time bomb. And I know that the angry person, they don't like it. They don't want to feel like that. They don't want to feel like everybody else has control of their emotions. But you got to go in and see where the f faults are, where the flaws are, where your holes are. What are, what are the things you're holding on to? What are the things that, you know, just set you off? And you'll start recognizing that you have certain things that, that irritate you, that set you off, that piss you off. Uh, it could be, you know, people ignoring people. When you don't feel someone's being heard, that just fucking pisses me off. You know, it's going to be something that you will find, but you got to go deeper into it. You got to find the jewel and then you find, you know, why you're holding on to it. You, it is just, it's like a, a journey going backwards to figure out how you got to where you are. But going backwards helps you to release it, to let it go. And then you go forward and you don't have to deal with it anymore. It's like all these opportunities. It's like the universe is giving us this gift of seeing and releasing so that we can let go of this stuff. And the universe is... Um, it's like it's making sure uh, that we have these certain experiences and stuff. Hold on. <sighs> At least she hasn't jumped up barking. Because there was some where she just jumped up and started barking. She kept barking and barking and barking. I was like, stop, stop. It was like 1.30 in the morning sure all the neighbors could hear her. and then I'm like stop stop and um she, she wanted to go outside she had to go outside she had to go out and see him I'm like don't bark <laughs> Jesus Christ three four four what in the holy hell is going on oh my god just tra taking you guys along for this journey this is my three two two. No, why do I keep saying three two two three two two? It's so stuck on my head. Um, my ten twenty two. Jesus Christ, Stella, come on, get in here. Come on, Stella, come on. Now, Stella, come on. Also, this is um, it's also uh, back there. It is where the mountain lion goes and everybody it's like the little place in the neighborhood where the wildlife goes down and that's where the mountain lion was before in my yard when I freaked the fuck out and when the and the before she when she came running from there but that when she goes over there and she starts barking I always think about that come in here you can't be outside barking man it's just Quiet. People are sleeping. <clears throat> People out here have guns too. They'll come shoot you. They're mad at you. Oh yeah, and that was the thing. That and see, just knowing that, and the reason I know that is because when I was on next door, because I used to be on next door when I moved out here, and you know I was knew what was going on. Like I was more community involved or something, and then um, because of certain things I said, then old fucking, um, <laughs> Roger Dodger, uh, what is his damn name? I've said it a bunch of times. Uh, I can't think of his name, but he got me kicked off. He, t he warned me he was going to get me kicked off, you know, cause I didn't have a science degree. I didn't have a nursing license. I shouldn't be saying shit I don't know about. And he would always call me Kelly with a Q and stuff. He was like, oh my God, this guy's so childish. And, uh, and he's an old man. I, I love to just see him in person. I know what this guy is like. It seems like he's just a grumpy old man. But uh, and you can't go again. You can't say against what he believes because then you're, you know, the devil or something. So he got me kicked off next door. And so um, there's lots of things you know, I wouldn't know about. But when I was on there, I would see... But people were constantly, their solution to everything was just, you know, get a gun and shoot them. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is intense out here. And so then um, whenever there's fights and stuff, and there was that big shootout. Um, when was it? It was a big old shootout uh, a couple of blocks away. And the cop got shot. The, that cop 
I don't think, I think he, he got blind. Um, and I don't know if anyone ever even moved back in the one house or if that guy went to jail. I don't even know what's going on. But, um, anyways, there was that whole shootout. It was weird too, because I'll hear the guns in the forest <clears throat> and it will like echo out. But the guns in the neighborhood, it, it didn't sound the same. I don't remember what I thought it was. I don't even remember if I heard it. Ugh, that's weird. I, I can't remember that though. while I was sitting outside. I could hear all the ant, all the sirens and stuff. But anyways, uh, there you know that always is on my mind because of how the people are out here and how they get so mad. Uh, but last night it was so weird because it, it kept seeming later than it was. It was like six thirty, and I was ready for bed. And so I, um, and it was getting, it was super dark. It was definitely 730. It was totally dark. And, um, it seems like it was like around seven or 730, maybe 630. No, it was more like seven or 730. And I heard all this yelling outside. It was a whole bunch of yelling. So then I tried to pause the thing so I could hear because then it's like, man, is this going to turn into like shooting? Is this like in a one person's has this a isolated incident or are they going to go and take out the neighborhood? Have we been invaded now? Like what's going on? <laughs> and so, um, I tried to hear and I could hear a bunch of yelling, but I couldn't, um, make out what was going on. And then all of a sudden I heard the neighbor's dogs out barking and so I thought, okay, she must have heard something too. And so she opened her door to hear and all her dogs came out. And then, um, so her dogs, three dogs came out and started barking. Stella was in here and she wasn't even making, she was like snoring or something. I think she woke up during all of this. But so then, um, maybe she didn't, but I was standing over by the window and I could hear her dogs going crazy barking. I couldn't hear the yelling anymore. And then she started yelling at her dogs, but there was this other sound that was like super creepy. I was like, oh my God, are the dogs barking? Or are we have like, are, are we about to start having like some sort of fucking supernatural monster in our woods? Like, fuck, I don't know what the hell that sound was. And, and the dog kept barking at it. And then in the sound again, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is just getting creepier and creepier. And when I went to get water the other day, and I'm looking up in that thing, you know, because the water thing's down here, and you're looking up the side of the mountain, and there's all this stuff hanging down and stuff, and it looks so uh, dinosaur land. And um, I kept thinking, oh, my God, there's going to be a dinosaur that's going to come running out here. Probably, I looked up because I was like, there's probably one hanging down, about to eat my head or something. Because uh, there is... Um, uh, apparently, I guess uh, they've already released some. They, they they tried to make some new little monsters. There's people who have been getting these little uh, uh, just dinosaurs found. I don't even know where all. Like this is just it just gets so crazy. <laughs> like they're making dinosaurs to attack us. We're entering these uh, these realms are all opening up. We've got all these supernatural beasts out there. There's um, all sorts of just spooky shit going on. <laughs> and then it, if it feels like we're ghosts in our own selves, it doesn't even feel like I'm real. I really like too what that girl was doing when she was showing all these tide pools and all these different realities and all these different layers and it's all on the same place, but it's all these different things. And while she was doing that, all of a sudden she goes, all of a sudden it feels so big. <laughs> and it's like that, I'd go through that all the time. Where I'll feel like all of a sudden I'll just feel huge. And I'll just be like, oh my God, this hand is the hugest hand. Like, it's so weird about how the giant is all about perspective, you know. And it's all about what you're next to. And so, um, her video was just so good. I really enjoyed that video. And the vid the doctor video, I recommend trying to see it. But, ugh, man. And I had said, like, I don't. I said, I don't think I'll be surprised by anything. I think I'll, you know, I think I'm going to see everything coming. Like, and even though, you know, the, the levels of corruption, it just is like, what in the holy hell? Like, fuck. Like, I knew hospitals were corrupt. Like, once I had gone in and gotten a brain injury and then gone to court and all of that stuff, 
Like, fuck. You get a completely new view, but Jesus Christ. Like, it is just... Like, who are these administrators? What are these meetings like? Are they at that booking... Uh, that, uh, what is that place called where all those creepy people go out in that forest with that big owl creature that, uh, what is it called? Like, it's not Bloomberg or something. It's like Bohemian, Bohemian Village or something. Maybe that's where they all work. Maybe they just, that's their, all their meeting place or something. Like, how in the hell do they get these people to go in and do all of this stuff. Like, are they MK Ultra? Do they not know what's going on? They just are like, oh my God. I, I just, I, I mean, inventing fucking brain dead. It's not even a thing. It's not even a real fucking thing. <laughs> I, I, am, I was, I'm just blown away. Like, fuck. If I would, I mean, I, I know there's no woulda's or any of that. It just is, uh, just weird. You know? I mean, I did go in and get a brain injury in the hospital. And I did feel like it was like, like, like I, I fucking do think they're murdering people. <laughs> 100%. And are they doing it with just having ignorant people running it and then all these goddamn people who just trust them trust these medical people to give them a piece of paper with a frame on it and hang it on the wall and fuck you just got trust up the fucking ass yeah and we've even had people printing out fucking fake degrees and hanging them on walls like that you can't trust that but still people do just because somebody has a degree does not mean that they have integrity. It doesn't mean that they have any common sense. It doesn't mean that they fucking know. The goddamn could be NK Ultra goddamn clone machines. Like, who knows what the hell? Who who knows? Maybe AI has been running the hospitals this whole damn goddamn time. How did these people go to work and not feel? How do you? God, just seeing some of these compilation videos of all of these kids who I just last week I was seeing them. These compilation videos of all these kids who have passed off that blue stuff and um, young, all young, like cheerleaders, like all these young fit kids go to a party and somebody hands them a joint and, and next thing you know, they're brain dead in the hospital on a ventilator, getting apnea tests. And you got the fucking organ retrieval people knocking at your door. Oh, we're here to make a good thing out of this. There is going to be a lot of anger that's going to be coming up. I think the medical thing, I mean, the money thing is going to bring up a lot of anger. It's going to bring up a lot of anger, but I don't think anything compared to what the medical thing is going to bring up. I think when the medical stuff starts coming out, the... Uh, I, I bet you, I mean, they're going to fucking, I bet there's going to be people who are going to blow up hospitals. There's going to be people who are going to wait outside for doctors to come out. Like, oh, this is going to get ugly. Fuck. And then you think about, like, because in going through all that trauma, because it's going to play out. It's just got to play out. And then, uh, then that family has got to go through all the trauma because they didn't know their husband was a fucking psycho. Or maybe they didn't know their husband was a goddamn clone. I don't know at this point. Is it, is, I worked at the hospital and I think I'm a real person, but fuck, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely parts while well, this has been going on where I feel like I'm just a programmed thing that came in to play a part. And now my part has started and I'm supposed to talk about things, about getting people to... I, I, it's like the, it's like I, I, I swear to God, it's like I can run programs. Like I can understand what they're telling me. So it is, um, I don't know. Like I know this is some type of a simulation. I don't think we're like in a computer, but fuck. This whole goddamn thing about raw, getting consciousness and sticking in a black box and sticking in computers and AIs become sentient and stuff. Fuck, I don't know. Maybe it is just a fucking we're in a goddamn computer and we think we're really living and because uh, it's all these levels of consciousness, just like that doctor said. 
you know, everything is live around us just because it's not, you know, doing certain things or whatever. But the, the body and the consciousness have not separated. But then once they take the organs out, then, then they don't give the, there's no chance. The body has no chance of survival. And then, um, and then how much are they doing of this? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, this was, I guess I'll say this and then I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll probably be back live this afternoon. But I had seen this and this seemed uh, very much like what I've been talking about. So there's something called the L, 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 Hoim, L, I think it's E L H O I M. And it's these beings. And I don't know the whole thing about them. I just heard this little snippet thing, but I thought, oh, this is like basically what I'm talking about is this El, 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 Hoim, El, Hoim, or whatever you said, um, these, this energy, these beings, this dark energy beings, and, um, in the Gnostic, they used to talk about them, and so from the part that I had seen about them, they're these, like, energy they're like darker energy but they can't create for themselves they can't uh, make something for themselves so they have to go through us so they have to kind of give us stuff to direct us but these are like way more advanced beings because the ones that I always am like this dark energy attachments it is it's like they uh they're just this this energy it's not like that they're um like a bunch of different like thought processes or something and so um but then how this was explaining this l ho -M -O or whatever and maybe you know these energies are, are are a part of them or something like i don't know i've i've heard the, everything i've ever heard of like from the gnostic teachings it's just drawn me in more. Like I'm so interested in them, but the, um, but the Elohim, they would like kind of sit and try and uh, direct us. So they like attach and direct you so they can experience. So they use you as an experience. So it's like basically like the same thing as what I'm saying. Like they're parasitic. They will talk. They try and get what they want. It's what they want. Well, they'll try and override you. So anyways, it, it, I was thinking if you're trying to understand more about like this attachment or something like what I'm talking about, it, you might find information in that. Like, like I'm, I'm really interested in this Gnostics teaching. I want to look up more about that because every time I hear stuff, I'm always like, I don't know. Maybe it was the religion when I was back in Egypt or something. Maybe we were back on Atlantis. Maybe that's where Gnostic comes from. I don't know. Maybe it's something that is in our core. It's in our our understanding. I think it's strange, too, because I know there's a ton of us who feel like we're from Atlantis times. And, and that doesn't even interfere at all with the fact that I feel like I'm from, like, the Pleiades or something. I feel like I've got some kind of... Like, it wouldn't surprise me if I have a body waiting back there that, that's just, you know, in some sort of a fugue state or something, and I'm here having this experience. Like, I feel like that is more of where I'm at now or something. Like, that's more of where I resonate when I'm not incarnated. But in the incarnation, you know, I feel... Um, really um a part of here it goes all the way back to and i always wonder if atlantis and egypt aren't somehow connected and it seemed like when i was listening to Matthias de stefano on that uh, initiation on gaia channel uh, he was saying that there was some kind of uh some kind of a thing with it like if it was the people left Atlantis and went to Egypt and started the tribes or something. I don't know. I'd have to go back in and watch that or something. But to me, it just seems like there's some sort of a, 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 an attachment of those two things. I don't know other people, but um, if you feel the same way, but I know there's a lot of people who feel 
like this attachment to Egypt or Atlantis. And so it's just funny to hear about all these guys who have this attachment to the Roman Empire. That is so past life. And that is so much what I've been talking about too, this going full circle. All these groups coming back, like this whole group probably of soldiers and all the different people that went through that experience during that. And then when you hear them talking about it stuff, and it's, it's, it's just crazy because it is like a whole group of people from that time are here for this time. And they're pointing out things about the relationship between the two times. And they are seeing they've got this unique perspective. Like I keep saying, we all have these unique perspectives that are all based on all these past lives that we've experienced. And so, uh, you know, that is... To me, another one of these big groups that are back together. It's really cool. And, um, you know, and I don't know how many people are, are different tribes and stuff who were meant to be, meet back up with and who were not of our different past incarnations and stuff. Or if it's all based on this um, frequency of where we are now. So this is just, all this is just so interesting to experience, but it's also so crazy. It's also weird. It's also intense. It also makes you feel like all of a sudden I couldn't remember where she was. Oh, this is so, this is so weird. 404. That's 22022. I don't know. I think today is going to be I, I sure hope that today is the day that the bang thing goes down. God, that would be so exciting. I'm going to call though and ask him about that money. And I thought about going in and um, getting some more groceries or something. I thought, well, maybe I should go get some more food or something if we're going to be. Because I, I, there keeps being the word on the street of that lock, locking us down when this shit goes down for three to ten days or something. And it'll be to kind of deflate. And probably the people who are the instigators is kind of corral some of them before letting the everybody else out and to release their anger because it will be a lot less violent if it is you know just American citizens or you know different people like ugh, I don't know I, I, but they definitely have instigators out there just waiting to you know just mass murder really just uh, pull a machete out of their car and just go at it. Like I don't know what they have in stores. Like goddamn purge. So um, I I would think if they're gonna do the money crash and then lock us down, it would be for that. Because if people went out and start being real angry and stuff, they're just gonna get themselves into some really nasty stuff. And and then plus if it leaves it to where you know it's kind of like uh, what was that musical chairs or something. Like all of a sudden, they need to, the people that don't have any place to sit down, it makes them stand out, stand up. So then they can see them. And that maybe that's an easier way to make sure that arrests get made or something. But so anyway, it's like, you know, hopefully today is our day where shit starts going. But if they do lock us down, but, but to me, I, I bought a bunch of silver. And that still is waiting to see too. Because are they going to let the, they show, they've sent me the receipt and stuff. They're making like it's going to go through, even though the dollar has no value. And the, definitely the silver and gold place knows that. And they know that there's no value to the dollar. So, um, but that's where I think that the, the white hats or whatever, there's a certain side that is keeping this open for us, I think, until the last second. And so, but I'm curious to see you know, if this will go through, if I will receive the bundle, um, you know, we'll see. They took the money out of my account and they've sent me a receipt. So we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. Hopefully it'll be in the mail <laughs> before because that's going to be another thing. Who's going to go out and deliver the mail? Who, if you're not getting paid, but maybe there's a whole thing with the postmaster where they're already going to be on the, um, the quantum financial thing. Maybe it's already been gotten set up. Maybe they've already been setting it up behind the scenes to make sure maybe UPS, Amazon, and um, FedEx and stuff. God, my nose is itching. Confirmation. <laughs> I swear to God, everybody does that about the burping. Um, 
Maybe it really is being confirmation. I'm starting to try and pay attention when I think stuff in the house, if I burp, it's like confirmation. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm just going to keep this positive energy that we are on the verge of greatness. We're on the verge of great change and it's going to hit some people in a hard way, but they'll get over it. They'll get over it. You'll see. It's going to be so much better. It's hard because there's so many people who are just like so stressed and don't want to, don't want it to go down and stuff like that. But they're just so hung up. They don't see. They just get hung up on the government, hung up on this, hung up on that. And they just don't see anything else. So there's really, like, there's, there's so, like, there's so many people who are just like a little bit awake. But when this all goes, it's going to be like a mass awakening. Like it's going to be a real flippity doo da day where all of a sudden people are just like what in the holy hell is going on as all the people who think like the money thing is going to be a crisis and it's going to be something good like everything is going to just flip where people think it's one thing it's going to be another thing all of a sudden so this is going to be wild but that is going to be the energy that just starts everything in motion i think with the solar flash and everything um, and I, it seems like to me, I swear to God, the firmament and the art in the ice wall is going to, it's going to go. I swear to God, it's going to go. So anyways, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go cut that bread and see how it tastes with the butter while it's still warm. I'm so excited. Now I feel like I'm quite the bread expert and I wasn't, I was really not feeling it on my start too. I kept thinking I had wrecked it. Because I had, it was going so good and then I had to put it in the fridge when I left. And when I came back, I keep trying to get it and I keep going, man, it just doesn't seem like it's getting super sour. But then when I poured it and it was rising all night, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so sour. That is such a good smell. And another thing too is trippy is when you're watching it, the bread is alive. It's moving. It's growing right before your eyes. And it is like, I don't know, it's just... Everything is moving and growing and stuff, and I'm seeing that. And then I go see this guy and talking about, like, yeah. they're just, like, fucking cut the heads off the flowers, motherfuckers. Like, these people are just something else. Like, when you just don't think that they could get rotten, they just get more and more rotten. Like, God, man, let's come up with a drug that we can kill them, save the organs, and we'll take all those. Like, what the fuck are you doing god damn even now what are they doing with all of these where are they going it's got to be in the burgers it's got to be like something weird is going on like seriously that is like this is a fucking conspiracy yeah, for sure like what in the hell do you fucking could possibly need that many organs like it's it's mental so anyways we'll ponder that and I just let this whole fucking thing blow up. And so anyways, I'll be I'll be back later and we'll talk to you later.